Ooh, the L trigger shot is crazy. Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Sorry about this one being late, guys. Uh, EA released this card, I think, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and I was playing Overwatch with my boys, and then at 3 o'clock I was like, oh, look, they draw they put out a draw Mario card. So uh, we're here now for the review. Uh, it's actually perfect for the way that this team is currently formatted because we're going to be using him in a 4-1-2-2 formation uh, to test him out on the attack and defense. This card is not going to be super ideal to use as of right now, but with Befica doing really well in the knockout stages and him potentially getting upgrades to give you those links to players like Manafa and stuff like that, there's a lot of potential to work with, okay? Manafa in regards to like the Portuguese league link, right? So um, yeah, this is a card I'm gonna complete regardless on my RTG account, and I really hope that Befica goes through into the knockouts because obviously having uh, more Portuguese teams in the knockouts is better than nothing, right? Having Porto Sporting and Befica in it would be fantastic. So guys, with João Mario, we're taking a look at a card who is five foot 10, medium low work rates, right footed, three star skills, four star weak foot, Work rates this year, I do personally really like the high high still. High high work rate is absolutely fantastic. High defensive work rate is fantastic to have. But if he's playing in a one of three midfield setup, it might be okay to work with the medium low. It might not be a that big of an issue, right? But we'll see because those improvements in the future is what we're going to be looking at mostly for this card. Uh, In-game player traits, he has playmaker, technical dribbler, solid player traits. In-game attributes, we do have to improve his defending stats so it's not available on footbin yet because i'm pretty sure even they didn't realize this card was going to come out but this card on a shadow chemistry style is going to be the most ideal thing to give as of right now could you technically give him a hunter chemistry style and and use him in a usable way in the cam position you definitely could right that's the main area that I see the card kind of being used if he gets really good improvements in the future because that's the one thing that people are not looking at because obviously the card is not upgrading here, but I'm just gonna show you guys an example, okay? So take a look at his base card stats as it is, right? Medium low work rates. Doesn't have to be used in the center mid position. In the cam position, if he gets the right improvements on a hunter chemistry style, right? Like so, because you can see that he gets a plus eight in acceleration, plus eight for sprint speed, plus eight for finishing, right? So his plus eight for finishing on this would go to an 82. Shot power would be really high. Attacking positioning would be improved. His pace would be in the 90s area, sort of like 90 and then an 88 as of right now. But in the future, if they keep improving the base card stats for passing, for dribbling, a card that can defend and has physical presence, a lot of potential to work with there. So you know what we're going to do first? We're going to give him a hunter and use him in the cam position. I want to see what his movement is going to be like in that general area. Very curious to see, uh, which actually kind of works because then I can use a 4-2-3-1 with this. Um, but yeah, passing on the cards in a really, really good area. He's got a four-star weak foot. So yeah, if you don't work with skill moves, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit of a letdown. But if you're just a little dribble pass merchant like your boy, then it'll be perfectly fine to use, right? Uh, there are some skill moves that are nice to have but they're more for like the five star. The four star doesn't have to be like too crazy. You know, if you're just doing like pass and go type movement as much as possible. But yeah, dribbling on the cards in the low 80s, mid 80s area now in the future could improve to be in a very good area. Defending on the cards in a pretty solid position too. That in the cam position could be a very, very big deal. And then for physical capabilities, the card is okay as well. So it's a card that has the potential of playing in the cam and the center mid position. Okay, sorry, so we fixed a few things here and there. So yeah, the custom tactics will be as so, 4 2 three, one. Uh, If you guys haven't seen this video already, be sure to watch it from the uh, review that we did on Boros Legends 4 2 three, one. But yeah, we'll use them in the cam position. And then what we can do is we can play the 4 one, two, and 2 and play him in the right center mid position, right? It's a, it's a cool thing, because this card has the potential to be a card that can attack and defend with, so you can actually switch between a wide and narrow formation very easily, right? So yeah, we'll see how he plays. Hopefully he's a beast. Oh, he's offside. <laughs> he's offside, but what a goal. I uh, try to finesse shot from a distance. Why not? Why not? See what's up. Hey, 
Oh, what a save by Onana. No chance, no chance. That wasn't a bad finesse shot, actually. Oh, too much power on that. I had the space for it, though. Good run. Really good run. Hunter chemistry style gets again into a good position. Nice little ball roll around the goalkeeper. Good goal. Uh, you know what's funny there? I actually tried to do a croquetta and I forgot that he doesn't have the skill moves. Oh, too much power on it. Too much power. I like the run, though. I do like the run. Sure. Sure thing. <laughs> He's onside. Nice. Good stuff. Oh, no green on that. Oh, that is super slow on that verbal spin. Okay, we're going to switch him to uh, center mid. It doesn't save my, uh, my tactics. This game's not saving a lot of stuff, eh? The settings, the tactics, I don't know what's happening. Guys, the problem with using a card like this in the cam position is that even if in the future he gets an improvement, you need skill moves up top. In the main attacking positions, you need it. Not so much in the midfield setup, but in the main attack, you do, right? So we'll see what he's like in this 4-1-2-2. Uh, two two. Oh, I'll trigger block. Pass it down. With the fullback. Nice draw, Mario. Free pass at the bottom here. Oh. So even though he has a medium low work rate, his track back's not that bad. Eh? You can see in that situation there, he did pretty well. It's not as crazy as like a high high, but we'll get that. Gotta pass it back when there's a lot of pressure. Oh, he missed that. It was a great pass by João Mario, though. That was a really, really good pass. That's a foul, right? Okay, good. <laughs> if I got it through like that, that would have been hilarious. Yeah, they should have given him the four-star, four-star, though, I will say. Um, definitely would have added a nice variable to the card, for sure. the L trigger shot is crazy. Look at, look at the state of that shot, man. That shot is nuts. No defensive animation, but how we move? His passes are actually good. The registration is a little bit weird right now, but okay, guys. So final verdict on the João Mario card. So guys, uh, this is definitely going to be the type of player that is going to be more for the people that want to build some sort of Liga Noche team in the future, okay? Uh, the reason being for this is because I'm going to show you guys the table right now for the Champions League, right? Benfica is actually in a pretty decent spot, um, and they may, have, they may have secured one upgrade for this card, actually, because I'm pretty sure they actually won that recent game, right? Or did they tie? I think they tied, actually. Ah, they did tie. Okay. So they tied on that game. Uh, Bafika is also going to still face uh, Juventus and Maccabi uh, as well. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, I think that Bafika is in a pretty decent position uh, to actually go through the group stages, right? Juventus right now is in a really rough patch. Um, seems like Allegri is not really cut out for it for the job this time before. He did a pretty good job for Juventus, to be fair, but doesn't seem like it's going to really turn around as of right now, but it's football, guys. Anything can happen. But as of right now, I can see them potentially 
getting two wins, maybe at least one, but I could also see them qualifying through the group stages. However, with a card like this, when it comes to meta of FIFA, medium low work rates is not super ideal. It's way better to have the high high if you do want to have um, two midfielders in that position, because this card definitely relies on the improvements for him to be as good as possible. Because yes, technically you can switch him to the cam position if he gets the right improvements in the future, but the lack of skill moves makes the card more linear, right? You have to kind of like dribble a lot, pass the ball a lot in those kind of ways for you to be able to fully utilize a card. And I feel like in the attacking position, at least having four star skills is very necessary. In the center mid position, as long as in a three midfield setup, it's not as bad with the medium low work rates. But again, there is a huge personal preference to have the high, high work rates in that center mid position. So it's one of those types of cards where you will unlock if you wanna build a Liga Noche team in the future, which I'm gonna get on my RTG accounts. But the problem is guys, is that we don't have a tournament mode, right? Like if you get to the elite division, you're not going to want to use a card like this in the elite division. Do you guys get what I'm saying? It's it's just that type of situation. So like I said, as an SBC, it's cool for people that want to build those Liga Noche teams and all that kind of stuff, but it's more for like the, the, the lower tier divisions, you know, um, even if he gets the improvements because he doesn't have the right base stuff, you know, am I going to do it myself? Absolutely. Do I see the card potentially being pretty solid in the future? I do, especially if Afika can actually make it pretty far in the Champions League. If you're building a Liga Norse team in general, it's going to be very helpful to have a player like this in the team. But as of right now, he definitely needs those two upgrades at the very least so that you can give him a shadow and then his base card stats for shooting is higher. Then you work him in the center mid position like a 4-1-2-1-2. Two, two. You will technically be able to use him in a two midfield setup as long as you have a proper medium high work rate player next to him if it's like a 4-2-3-1, right? Because guys... Obviously, if we're going to be comparing Portuguese midfielders, you can literally get rare gold Renato Sanchez and it'll be better than this card, right? Um, but if we take a look at the actual league itself, which hopefully is actually called the Liga Noche, it's not. What is it called in this? Liga. It is Liga Noche. I guess it just wasn't the right thing. Uh, in the Liga Noche, right? And if you search the midfield positions, uh, just CDM, center mid, cam, sure, why not? Enzo Fernandez is actually pretty decent. High, high work rates on his thing as well, Befica. You know, it's, technically you can actually use a Liga Noche team with Juan Mario and Enzo Fernandez in it. You're going to be at a little bit of disadvantage, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's it's possible, right? It is possible as of right now. Uh, cam position, the Sonora guy is definitely going to be better for sure. But as you can see, there's literally no other option, right? So um, it's more for the future. It's more for looking into those upgrades as much as possible, okay? Guys, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.